All right, so now we're going to start up exponent rules and properties. With these problems, it's kind of difficult to show you tons of examples to do it because anything could be different. Uh, the main thing you've got to know is negative exponents. What happens is the term with negative exponent flips and exponent becomes positive. Now it's important that you realize I said the term with the negative exponent, not necessarily everything, only the term that has a negative exponent. So for example, in this first one, uh, 2 to the negative fourth, you could really say that that's over 1, like any number. Well, when you flip that, it becomes 1 over 2 to the positive fourth, and you could go even one step further and go ahead and say that that's 1 over 16. Now, the problem is in one like 1b, when you have 5m to the negative fourth, the only thing that has a negative exponent is that m to the fourth, the negative fourth. So the only thing that flips is the m to the fourth. The 5 stays put because really the 5 is, has its own exponent of 1, which is the only thing that affects that 5. It's not being affected by that negative 4. All right. As we go to zero exponents, anything to the zero power equals 1. So in this problem here, 1c, you have 3a to the next si negative second, cd all to the zero. The answer for this is just 1. Again, only the thing that has the zero equals 1. So if I was to give you, in a separate problem, 4x to the 0, well, that's 4 times 1, which is 4. Okay, the only thing that becomes 1 is the thing with the negative or the 0 exponent. So now let's say we get to a problem here that has both negative and 0 exponents. Well, I know that x to the 0 here, anything to the 0 power is 1, so that becomes 4 times 1. I also know that anything with a negative exponent flips, so if it's on bottom it goes to top, the exponent becomes positive. I now have my final answer is 4c to the seventh power. Okay, so pretty basic stuff there. Now, just general exponent rules and everything. You'll say that it's similar to distribution when you have one like 7a, we do negative 3c to the second, d to the fourth to the third. I just say make sure you realize you're distributing it to exponents. So it becomes negative 3 to the third, c to the 2 times 3, which is 6, and d to the 4 times 3, which is 12. Notice how I put that negative 3 in parentheses, because when you plug this into your calculator, you have to have that negative in the parentheses or your calculator is going to give you wrong answers. So this becomes negative 27 c to the 6th d to the 12th. Okay. In 7b, another different look. The only thing being affected by that 3 exponent is the 2w. So it's 3w squared times 2 to the 3rd w to the 3rd. Because that 3, again, we distribute it to the exponents. So now this gives me 3w squared times 8w to the 3rd. 3 times 8 gives me 24. w to the second times w to the third gives me w to the fifth. And there's your final answer. And just slightly tougher ones like these last two. Uh, whenever I have them where I have two fractions multiplied, I like to just make one line across. I multiply the top, I multiply the bottom. So on the top, 3 times 7 gives me 21. v to the third times v to the one gives me v to the fourth. We add those exponents. p to the third times p to the second is p to the fifth because we add those. On bottom, two times two is four. v and then p to the one times p to the one is p to the second. Now we can go ahead and simplify whatever's left. In this case, 21 over four stays the same. Those have no common terms. 
v to the fourth over v to the one, well, you can do that if you remember from Skittle math that you did in your Algebra 1 class when you had the Skittles or M&Ms on top and bottom, you would subtract. So v to the fourth over v to the one would be v to the third because four minus one is three. Similarly with p to the fifth over p to the second, five minus two is three, so it's also p to the three. All right, and last but not least, this problem right here, I'm going to distribute the 2 as an exponent to everything. So there can be a lot of lines here. This gives me 5 squared, a to the 4th, because 2 times 2 is 4, b to the 6th, 3 times 2 is 6, over 2 squared, a to the 3rd to the 2nd gives me 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and then b to the 4th again, because 2 times 2 is 4. So we can go a little bit further here, 25, a to the 4th, b to the 6th, over 4, a to the 6th, b to the 4th. This is where subtracting and dividing with the exponents gets a little bit tricky, because what happens when you have a bigger one on bottom? Well, what I always say is, we're still going to subtract. Find the bigger exponent. For the a's, the bigger exponent is 6, but it's located on bottom. So I still do 6 minus 4, but that 2 that's left over has to stay on bottom, because that's where more a's were. Just the opposite with b to the 6th over b to the 4th. 6 minus 4 is still 2, but there's 6 b's on top. So there's more b's on top. When I do 6 minus 4, it's 2. stays on the top, though. And that's just some basic rules of how to work with problems with exponents.